In this video, our project is going to take the price from these three websites for this same product and store it into a database. This is going to be a beginner level Python project. We're going to be web scraping the data and we're going to use SQLite 3 as a database. So I already have my virtual environment set up in VS Code and these are the requirements that you need. Now you can either use the requirements.txt, I have all the code for this in my GitHub, or you can pip install these individually if you prefer. So to get started, let's import what we need. Re requests, beautiful soup, and pony. So pony is the ORM that we're going to be using to talk to the database. As I said, in this case, it's gonna be SQLite. So there's a few things that we're gonna to need to do to get this to work. We're gonna to need to configure the database, sort, up the scrape, sort out the scraping functions to get the data, and then put it all into the database at the end. So I'm gonna start with creating and sorting out the database. So I'm gonna create a instance of it here, orm.database. And then I'm gonna do db.bind, which is basically going to um, set up, configure the database for us. So we're gonna say that the provider is going to be equal to SQLite, which is a great database to use uh, for small projects like this. Uh, file name, which is what it's gonna be called, we'll just call this products.db. And then the last thing is create, db is equal to true. This just means that if this file doesn't exist, it will create the database for us. So every database needs to have a model. This is where we map the data that we're gonna to get to the columns inside the database table. So we start with class, and I'm gonna call this product, and it's db.entity. This is the way that Pony does it. The first piece of information we're gonna get is a name. So we do ORM and dot required because it must have a name, and we're gonna say that it's a string. Then I'll say that we'll have the price, uh, orm.required again. And this time I'm gonna say the price is going to be a floating point number. Now, this is okay in this instance, but you need to be careful when you're doing any kind of mathematics on floating point numbers when talking about money, because it might not turn out the way that you want it to. Sometimes I use float, other times you can use decimal, sometimes I use string and then convert it at the end. We're gonna use float in this case. The next thing we're gonna have is a timestamp that's going to show us when exactly we put this specific piece of data into the database. Uh, and we need to do date time for this. So I'm gonna go in ahead and import date time too. From date time, import date time. Okay, so this is the first part of our database. We're initializing it. We're saying this is what we're doing. And this is the class of the database model. This is the information that we want to save. What we need to do now is just need to do db.create generate mapping. And we want to say that create tables is equal to true. This is just going to sort everything out for us. And if I was to run this now, we'll notice over here that we get this products.db file. This is our actual database now with this table created in it. So that's the database part. The next part we need to do is to actually scrape the data itself. Now for this, I'm gonna create a function for scraping for each website so we can easily call that back. Um, and we're gonna be using a session object. Now I will create the session at the end, so just bear with me in that case. So let's have a look at the first website. We'll start over here and we'll just grab the URL. So I'm gonna say that this is gonna be gears four. And as I said, we're gonna pass in a session object. This is what we need to make the requests with. And I'm also gonna pass in some headers. Now I'm anticipating having to use a user agent and maybe some other headers in this case, but to add those into the function manually each time means copy and pasting code. So I'm just gonna pass them into the function as we go and I'll create them once at the end. Okay, so now we can say that our URL is equal to what I just copied. Thank you, nice long string. And then we can make the request. So I'm gonna say the response, our ESP, is equal to, and the session object that we're gonna use, which we're gonna create in a minute, dot get on this URL. And we're gonna say that our headers is equal to the headers that we are also going to pass into this function. Like any basic HTML web scraping, we're going to be using Beautiful Soup. I'm gonna come over to the website at the moment. I'm just gonna show you one thing that I like to test to make sure that it can be scraped with Beautiful Soup is to copy some text from the page, go to view page source, 
and do control F and find. And if you can see it in here like this, this generally means that we can use this approach to scrape it. If you can't, it's done differently and this won't specifically work, but there are other ways uh, on my channel to get that data. So let's go back to our code and we'll say that our soup is equal to the beautiful soup of our response.txt. And we need to say that we're gonna be using the html.parser you can use whichever one you like. I'm just used to using that one. So there's two things we need to do now. We need to think about how we're going to send the data out of this function, in what format and how what it's going to look like, and also the selector that we're going to need. So we notice in our model, we're sending the name of the store and the price. So I'm going to suggest that in this case, we're going to create our own data variable here, and it's going to be a tuple. Now, when it comes to putting data into a database, I find a tuple is a bit better because we can um, index it and it doesn't have the key value association. So essentially, our database is gonna, with the table in there, is already the key and we're just giving it the value. So it makes sense to do this rather than using a Python dictionary. The first piece of information is gonna be this, a string and it is going to be the name of the store. So gears for music, because we want to know that this, this price came from this store. The second piece of information is going to be the price itself. So we need to actually extract that out now using our selectors. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be soup.select1. Now I'm using CSS selectors with beautiful soup. You can use the other ones if you want to. I just prefer this. Select one will give you one back, whereas select will give, always give you a list. So if you use select, you're gonna to have to index it. So now we need to actually find the selector on the page. So let's come back to it. And I'm gonna use the inspect element in this case now, so I can find where this is on the page, make this a bit bigger. And we can see right away that we have found the selector here. So it's in this span class C-VAL. Now I tend to prefer to use to chain the selectors together if I think something might be a bit different on different pages or if I don't think this is specific enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back up here and I'm going to see this span class info row price and then span cval. And what we can do is we can say span dot info row price and then span dot c dash val. So this is basically saying look here and then underneath it look here. Then we can call dot text on this selector and this is going to be the text from it in here. So in this case, the 370.00. Now as it stands, this is going to be a string. It's gonna return a string for us, but we have set up here, we're going to be putting it in as a float. So we need to convert this whole thing into a floating point number. So I'm just gonna wrap the whole thing into float. And because I know that the, the string that's coming back is gonna be able to be passed into a float, we're going to just do it this, and this will work for us. Now we want to return the data, the data tuple out of this function here, uh, and that's gonna be all the data that we get from this page. What I'm gonna do now before I move on to the other two is I'm gonna create that session object and we're gonna test this function. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna have a main function. I'm gonna have this that's gonna control everything. I'm gonna run my other functions from here and control the flow of my program. So I'm gonna say that my session is equal to requests.session. Generally speaking, I would always recommend you use a session object. It's much easier to work with and it has certain benefits. Although in this case, we're gonna be accessing different websites. If you're accessing the same one that you can, uh, makes a bit quicker using the same connection, TCP IP connection. Um, but this is definitely the way forward. I would recommend doing it. The next thing that we wanna do is create the headers. Now I told you we were passing in them here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just attach them to this session object. So I'm gonna do session dot headers dot update. I'm gonna pass here in my dictionary. This is basically going to say, whenever we use this session, we're gonna use these headers. So let's have our user agent. And then let's grab a user agent. I'll copy that, thank you, we'll stick that in there. And because we've done this, we can actually remove this. We don't need it because we're gonna be using the session that has this user agent already. It makes our code just a little bit neater up here. It's all done here. 
So now we can try out our function. So we'll just print whatever comes out of it. Gears four session is the session and we don't need headers because we have removed that. So we can remove that from our function as well. That's done now. So this session is here. To run the main function, I always do the if name is equal to main, double under name like this. This just means that um, this code will only run if we run this file directly. Then we put our main under here like this. So let's run it now, find out where I did anything wrong. I didn't, so there we go, we got it back. We got a nice tuple of the name of the store and a floating point number of the value that we are scraped from the price. So this is all coming together nicely now. So all we need to do is replicate this for the other uh, stores. And I'm gonna do that relatively quickly because it's basically the same. So I'm just gonna say, we'll change the name to Amazon here. We'll put this in here. And this one is the other store like this. Okay, and we'll just grab the URLs. Paste them in, grab the URL, paste that in. Okay, so all we need to do is update the selectors. So let's come to this one, inspect here, div class price and div class price wrapper. They should do nicely for us. So this one was like this. And the Amazon one, let's go and do this. And we'll use this box here. Now with Amazon, you have to be a bit more careful because there's lots of different selectors. But if you just do what I did before and follow up the tree before you get to where you want the actual value. So this is what I want here. Uh, but I'm gonna follow up to this one uh, like this. So it was a div, will be the first one like that. And then this one is the one we want, which is a span of off screen like this. So this is what it's going to work for us. Now, what you'll notice, and I think it's on this one here, that the text that we're actually grabbing is going to have this pound symbol in. So if I try to run this one, I'm going to replace this one here like this. We'll try this, see what we get. Could not convert string to a float. So what we need to do is deal with that data somehow. And the easiest way we're gonna do it in this case is we're just gonna do dot replace. And we're gonna say of the old is gonna be the pound symbol and the new is just a nothingness, nothing like that. So this should allow us to now create, convert that string because we remove the characters that we couldn't before. So that works, so let's test the Amazon one. Hopefully this works too. Could not convert string to float, fantastic. We'll do exactly the same thing there, like this. And run it again, fantastic. So now that we have our three working functions, I'm just gonna collapse these out of the way. We can work on our main function now a bit more. So as I showed you, this returns out the data in a tuple like we wanted. Now there's a couple of things that we could do here we could go one by one and insert it into the database, or you could go through each one, uh, store it into a list, and then loop through and go to the database, or you could even create a big chunk and then add it all in one go. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this and then we're gonna create a new list of everything. So the first item in our list is gonna be the tuple from Amazon. The second one will be the uh, Gears 4, Thank you, VS Code. And the last one will be the other store there. I can type this in right, session. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna create a list. And what that's gonna mean is that I can now just quickly check that this is all working together. And uh, then we can work on putting it into the database. Okay, so now I have a list of tuples, which is exactly what I wanted to get to. I'm going to work on putting it into the database. So I have my database already created and the table set up and the information that I wanna put in is in this order. Now you'll notice that we haven't done anything with this created at created date yet. So we need to figure that in as we need to factor that in as well. Whenever we're opening and closing a connection to something, it's always recommended to use a context manager. So we're gonna do with, 
and it's orm.db session that we want. So we're going to open up a session that's going to allow us to interact with this database. Then we'll do for item in data, which is going to loop through each one of these tuples with our data list. Then we can construct the model how we want it to look with our, our data. So we're going to call product, which is our class, our model here, our database model. Then we have name, price, and created. So we need to do it in that order. So I'm going to come back here. I'll say name is going to be equal to item, which is our tuple, the first index. Then the price is going to be equal to item, the first index, because that's always the first index here. And then the, finally, we need to do created, I call it created at, is equal to, and because we set this up here in our, uh, our database model as a date time object, we can actually just do date time dot now. And that's going to take the actual time that this statement runs and store that in the database as well. So we should be good now to test this. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. If I get no errors, we should have this data input nice and neatly into our database, except I've got no attribute there created at, and that's because I called it created date. Should have called it created at, that makes more sense. Never mind. we'll leave it like this. Perfect, so we had no errors, so that means that's worked. Now, to check on this, you could have a maybe a VS Code extension that lets you look inside SQLite databases, but I prefer to use a separate program. It's called DB Browse. So I'm just going to make this a bit smaller on this side. Now I've got this open, and we'll see that we have the table created here. Now if I open the table up, you'll notice that we have an ID as well, and that's because our ORM pony has created a uh, primary key ID for us, even though we didn't put it in here. Now, if we'd have said one wanted one of these to be our primary key, then that's what would be there. But in this case, it's done it for us. And you can see that it has the uh, text. Uh, real is what it's been converted to in the database, not float, and the date time. So if we go browse data, we can see we have the information here of what we just scraped. Now, I'll run this again. And you'll we'll be able to see that three more entries go in. Obviously, I don't expect the price to have changed, but you'll you hopefully see uh, that the times have changed as well. There we go. So where would you go from here? Well, there's a couple of issues with this because obviously this is a bit a beginner le beginner level. Is that these functions for scraping are quite brittle. We're not doing any error handling with these. So I would recommend first thing to check out would be what happens if this fails and how would we handle that? The second thing that I would add in is because you're probably going to want to run this uh, on a cron job on a Linux server perhaps or something else that you would want to add in some logging. So that would be the next thing that I would add in. Neither of those things are overly complicated. I've talked about them on my channel before. So if you're interested in them, you're going to want to check out this video right here.